In this video, we're going to talk about the cross-chain bridge, the amendment that's up for vote, and how it's going to impact your investment long-term if you hold XRP or issued assets on another network. So what is the cross-chain bridge? Why does it matter? How can it, you benefit from it? Uh, this amendment is up for vote currently. Um, it is <clears throat> XLS38D is the name of the amendment. It is the X-chain bridge or the cross-chain bridge, uh, which allows for a two-way street between um, side chains on the XRPL and potentially other blockchains in general uh, with the XRPL. So what it does is it basically allows you to wrap tokens and issue them a uh, representation of that on another network uh, if they're coming off of the XRPL or uh, vice versa, if they're an issued asset on a different blockchain and you wanted to utilize that uh, to transact with XRP and its ecosystem, you could wrap it there uh, and then be able to use it uh, in whatever is developed uh, or for settlement uh, through the XRPL. So why is this a value add? What does it do? It allows for interoperability in the space is really what it comes down to. So there's side chains that have been developed uh, on the XRPL. They're EVM compatible. Uh, we've got the hook side chain. Uh, and I'm sure that there will be others that are developed later on uh, that allow for smart contract capability. You might test, uh, and that's what Hooks is. It's a test net, uh, which, you know, have they have a representation of the XRPL where they have implemented uh, smart contracts native to the network. Uh, and they want to make sure that, that it's not going to break things on the main net before it's deployed, right? So it's kind of a test net for that smart contract protocol to make sure that everything is going to work correctly before it's deployed to the main net. Uh, and you could see that in other instances, maybe people want to, you know, propose an amendment uh, to the XRPL, but they want to showcase that it is sustainable and it's not going to cause uh, huge problems with scalability or settlement times or a bunch of other things. Uh, or maybe it is, but it provides some other functionality that people would like to have, right? And so you need this cross-chain interoperability between the mainnet to be able to settle things and represent them on the public chain versus maybe you have some private permission networks on the side that you know, people operate within. Uh, and that'll be part of it too. You know, there are certain circumstances where uh, people want to connect to the main net to have interoperability, um, but, you know, they don't want all of their transactions within their ecosystem disclosed on a public ledger, which makes sense, right? Maybe you want to be able to operate with another party and need that to be trusted. So you'll transact over the main net, but your side chain or private ledger that you work on, you know, you don't want all of those transactions to be public. So uh, this is a huge, huge deal. Um, and really, it's just the underlying collateral uh, that'll be wrapped. So you could um, take your XRP if you wanted to wrap that as collateral and use it within another smart contract or another ecosystem on another chain. Uh, you would lock it uh, on the XRPL. Uh, it would be wrapped and escrowed. Uh, and then that representation of the ownership of that would be what would be represented on the other chain that you sent it to and had a wrapped XRP on, right? So like Flare Networks is one of the ecosystems where people are kind of familiar with that uh, or with this process where you have F XRP. So you, you're you you're locking your XRP uh, and they issue a representation of that on that chain so that you can do things with it. Um, and you could have, you know, a circumstance where somebody, um, you know, wants to use their Bitcoin on the XRPL in some type of protocol, right? Or uh, for settlement reasons or, or other things, kind of like the Lightning Network, right? Um, so you would lock that Bitcoin um, in, in that account uh, and it would have a representation issued on the XRPL. You could transact with it in that ecosystem and then whoever ended up with the ownership could exchange it for uh, when they wanted to move back to Bitcoin's network for that Bitcoin. Um, and this has huge implications for, again, you know, broader financial adoption with financial institutions and enterprises, uh, wealth management, um, broader markets as a whole for the tokenization of real world assets. And we won't go into depth there. But again, I think that there's a pretty significant use case where people are transacting in private permissioned environments uh, with tokenized securities or commodities or uh, other things in private markets uh, that might want to transact in secondaries uh, on a mainnet or public ledger like the XRPL. And so you're going to need this X chain bridge amendment to pass in order for those possibilities to exist in the future. This does currently have 12 votes for yes uh, amongst the 37 validators. I believe that they are waiting for an upgrade to the network before they finalize the vote, you know, hopefully within the next couple of months here. 
Uh, we do see the implementation of this amendment on the network, uh, and we do have the capability to be interoperable with uh, other blockchains and side chains with the mainnet on the XRPL. So if you found this valuable, please like, subscribe, uh, and we will see you on the next one.